Wonderful good day, ladies and gentlemen. Mines and Money 2015, and I'm just arrived. I even had no chance to put on a tie. But uh, yeah, we want to start with a very famous interview partner. We are very proud to have Frank Holmes here, the Chief Investment Officer of US Global Funds. And uh, he yeah, has taken the time for us to talk a bit about the markets and how he's investing. Frank, thank you very much for taking the time. Glad to have you here. It's always great to be in front of you. You have so much enthusiasm for life. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, Frank, it was again a horrible year this year for gold, for silver, for copper, etc. Uh, the stocks were again hammered. How have you done this year and how have you behaved? It's a great <laughs> question, but you know what's interesting is that the price of gold in dollar terms and in Swiss francs has been challenged. Mm -hmm. However, when you go to other countries' currencies like Australian dollar, these gold stocks are up 900% this year. Mm -hmm. 300, 600 percent. So we've had great performance by picking some of these Australian gold stocks. We can't have a whole portfolio and only five names, but because the Australian dollar has fallen so much and the price of oil, they're making so much money, these stocks have taken off. Mm -hmm. So one has to look around the world in what country's currency is gold strong. So in Canadian dollars, it's strong. Yeah. In Australian dollars, it's strong. Absolutely. Um, some producers still suffer, of course, and uh, as far as I know, I think the all-in production costs are around 1,050, 1,080 if we take an average in the world. Do you think there's more room to bring production costs down? Do you think there's room for gold producers? As we heard already, some mines are closing. Well, I think it's gonna be, this will be a big year for the bottom in pricing mm -hmm. because we are starting to see cash flow returns on investor capital rising. Mm -hmm. And we are also way overweight at the royalty companies because they have the highest profit margins and highest cash flow returns on invested capital. So you're going to look at those gold mining companies like Newmont will struggle. They struggle because it's predominantly, say, U.S. operations, U.S. costs, and gold in U.S. dollars is it's difficult. Mm -hmm. But other companies, like I mentioned earlier, that are in Australia or Canada, that are just like Osisco oh, Royalty is just Canada. Guess what? Doing exceptionally well. Rob McEwen's company, McEwen Mining, it's in Mexico. Mexican pesos down. Yeah, wow. uh, it's a Canadian company. Yeah. So, therefore, you get profit margins. Yeah, perfect. Um, how do you rate Latin America, then? I well, mean... Like Argentina is a bit... Uh, uh, you know, Argentina is a great turn. Up, right? It's a great turn yeah. story. I think the new leader there is an engineer, yeah. a successful business person, mm -hmm. well admired and respected in Buenos Aires. And I think that uh, it's a great change. And so we saw a lot of the mining companies that have big Argentine assets go up last week. Mm -hmm. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> Hope you have invested. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> great. Um, let's come a little bit to 2016 more now, because we have the mines and money here in our back, and the doors will open tomorrow morning. Um, we see already less boosts this year. Again, I, we hope that's the bottom for sure. But uh, what is your feeling for next year? I mean, it's now the fifth year we are in a bear market. We are in a bear market. But what's really interesting, I just spoke at a conference in Lima, Peru, 500 executives paying $1,000 each to attend. Mm -hmm. Then I was in Melbourne, and once again, a couple thousand people ended up attending. So here what's interesting is that there's many top quality speakers and CEOs of senior mining companies. You have Pierre Lassan from Franco Nevada, the largest royalty company in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, they're all speaking at this event. So this is probably more of a bottoming period that the junior mining companies, they don't have the money to come and be here, but many of the law firms, accounting firms, and engineering firms, they are here. Mm -hmm. So I believe that a lot of the big mining companies, this will be the water shed year of write downs and write offs yeah. and next year will be the slow climb my biggest fear in the in looking next year will be sovereign debt from emerging countries such as zambia or uh countries like uh, in latin america that that rely on exports so will they default that's probably the with the falling commodity prices and that's what happened at the beginning of the 80s mm -hmm. then we, away we go but next year is a presidential election cycle Governments are out there printing money, so I do think that we'll <laughs> get a positive turn. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, just a tip from your side. What would you prefer now? I mean, of course, companies with low production costs, that's for sure. Uh, what do you think about, let's say, good developers or even the exploration sector? Well, it depends what country they're in. Yeah. And explorers, they're going to have it very difficult. Why waste your money in exploring? Really? 
you, you want to develop a resource and, and you can go and get incredibly cheap resources that, that are trading at a nickel on the dollar of what they were four years ago, that you know the gold is in the ground or the silver is in the ground. That's probably a much better bet as a, using math. Mm -hmm. But what's important, I've always told investors to have a 10% weighting in this space, 5% bullion and coins and 5% gold stocks. It's gold mm -hmm. stocks which have high margins, high cash flow returns, investor capital, or explorers that have a lot of reserves per share. Mm -hmm. the, the real important part is per share because they're the ones that get bought out. Mm -hmm. And then rebalance each year. So now what's taking place I see in Europe, the idea of going to a cashless society, that's very dangerous. And that's why I'm probably going to see more gold coins and silver coins being purchased. Mm -hmm. I read about it today in Bloomberg in, in Sweden. Uh, now it's going to be in Switzerland, this, this thesis. Well, what happened when you had countries like Venezuela went to credit cards? Chavez turned around and started managing where you could spend your money. Mm -hmm. And this is an issue in Argentina also. Mm -hmm. So they limit to where you can spend your money. Wow. And we saw they, they, they block your account, right? They block your account. Wow. So they control everything about your life. Mm -hmm. So the idea of having some silver and gold, I think it's just prudent to have some. Absolutely. And we saw what happened in Cyprus. They froze the account. Yeah. They took your bank account. They shaved it away to pay for their losses. But they only give you back at the beginning uh, 300 euros a week and then 300 euros a day. Mm -hmm. And it didn't matter how much money you had. Mm -hmm. They basically start controlling your whole life for cash. Yeah. So this is this is a classic example. I wrote about it in my investor alert on, on Friday. Yep. Uh, so you can go to usfunds.com and read about it and I show the photographs of Venezuela showing food that was in the country it wasn't it's fantastic because it's what happens when socialist governments get control of all your money they dictate not only Absolutely. when you should get up in the morning and when you should go to work but where you can spend your money mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Where well, for food and water, maybe. Yeah. Yes. And uh, I think there's one thing to add: a bullion for sure, stocks for sure, but also a good wine cellar. A good <laughs> wine cellar. <laughs> Great. Well, Frank, thank you very much for that, and uh, let's hope 2016 is getting better. I want to have only one last um, opinion from you, um, because we saw the base metals totally hammered, and I mean copper is now around the two dollar space. I think it's really yes, getting yes. tricky for a lot of producers, and I think also Glencore put already 500,000 tons out uh, of, of of the um, production. Right. What is your opinion about? Well, I, I really think a lot of the base is going to happen. The bottom is going to be this year and the first quarter of next year. Mm -hmm. uh, the big trick is to watch China. I've written about this called PMI, Purchasing Manufacturers Index. Mm -hmm. When the one month is above the three months for globally, that's positive and constructive. But that's only when you have China above the 50 mark. It's so important to have them. Mm -hmm. So right now, we need to have China, it's turn, but it's not strong enough yeah. to pick up the supply. And this is the big issue. The negative I heard last night was that in Africa, they're actually pulling back in Africa, the Chinese. Mm -hmm. So how far they're going to go, I do not know. Mm -hmm. I, I do know that they want to have political power. They have to create jobs mm -hmm. and they have to create income level rising. So China will do the, what I believe is necessary. What I find is that cheap money around the world has not been an economic job creator. No, never ever. It's a, excessive mm -hmm. taxation yeah. on every part of the personal life. Mm -hmm. You can see in, in South America, Colombia has the highest tax rates in all of Latin America. And guess what? Their stock market fell more than Greece. Mm -hmm. Oh, la la. I and felt more than Brazil. Yeah, that's not easy to because do. Because yeah. the taxation for government workers yeah. does not create economic growth and stability. Yeah. Yeah. So I think next year we're going to see with the U.S. elections, lots of stimulus taking place. Fiscal stimulus, tariffs dropping like the, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, mm -hmm. which is a quarter of the world's GDP. Mm -hmm. Those things being implemented, that's what's a key for commodities to turn. Okay, super. Well, then let's hope this happens all. Frank, thank you very much. I wish you great minds and money and always lovely to have you here. And thanks for your time again. Yes, happy <laughs> investing. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, it was Frank Holmes, the Chief Investment Officer of US Global. Check out his uh, newsletter for sure at usglobal.com. I have subscribed since many, many years and I read it yeah, nearly daily when I have time to do that. And it's really fantastic what he and his team is writing. And uh, yeah, for sure, Hopefully, well, for sure, hopefully, we're getting better this year. The Minds and Money is uh, maybe a, a contra-indicator as uh, less companies are here. Let's see how many attendees we have here. And yeah, Frank is also slightly positive. I think I can say that. And uh, yeah, we will see what it turns. Merry Christmas and thanks for watching us. Bye-bye from London. <laughs>